you've ever seen these brilliant baseball cap treat boxes before, today we are making them the fastest and easiest way. You'll definitely want to see all these shortcuts to assemble your own amazing hat box, as well as these vibrant baseball themed treats to put inside, these all-star strawberries, caramel bat pretzels, and baseball cap cake bites will score a home run as a gift for Father's Day, any baseball fan, or your small business. It's baseball season, so comment your favorite team below, and be sure to keep on watching! The best part about this project is you don't need to go out and buy a Cricut machine if you don't have one. I ordered all of my kits from crafty underscore mandy89 on Instagram. If you would like to order from Amanda's shop, just send her a DM of the teams that you want and it's so convenient. All you need to do is grab the glue and put your kit together. So let's start off with the base of the hat first. Take out your hexagon and six of these pieces. They fold along the bottom and sides. I call them the walls of the hat. Just make sure to fold them so the straight side and the side with the cutouts meet. Otherwise, it will end up backwards and it creates a little wall when you glue them together. And speaking of glue, my favorite is the Barely Art Craft glue. It has such a precise tip, so it keeps everything neat and on point instead of using hot glue. It gives you more time to line everything up without drying, and allows for more adjustments by wiggling it without ripping the paper. All I'm doing is applying a strip of glue along the bottom fold and lining it up directly underneath each side of the hexagon. Feel free to fold back any of those hanging pieces on the side if they get in your way to give yourself more room. And slightly bend the wall inside, then repeat all around the hexagon. It really is that easy and fun, almost like a game. Now that we have six of our walls up and ready, Fold in all the sides so that when you add your glue, you can build your wall. And remember that the folds should be facing inwards. Next, go ahead and hold the paper back while adding three dots of the glue. Then fold the straight side in a little at a time. It should cover slightly over the crease line to create a curved effect like you see on a hat. The key is to fold in a small amount, then press and hold for a few seconds before following the rest of that curve to ensure it stays securely in place without popping open. Once your top base is complete, this is where all of your treats are going to go inside. For the bottom base, there are going to be three of them in your kit. For this, I recommend to use a glue stick instead of the craft glue to prevent the cardstock from appearing bumpy. Since the bottom base is a larger area, the glue stick keeps it nice and flat. After running the glue stick over one of the pieces, layer the second right on top by lining it up and smoothing it out to flatten. Then once everything looks good, do the same with the third layer. Now it's really starting to look like a baseball cap to complete the entire base. Flip the top base over and apply glue on all the edges, then place onto the bottom base. I guide it slowly and gently press without sliding the hexagon. Although the glue dries clear, you want to keep the front of the hat clean and free of smudge marks. Directly on the front goes the bill of the hat. There are some slits to look like the stitching. I try to stay away from the slits when adding the glue so it doesn't peek through. And there we have a home run by completing all the bases. It is time to put all the panels together. This is where many experience some trouble, but it doesn't need to be hard. There will be six panels, and what you are going to do is find the top notch where the triangle is, and the edges that look like shark teeth, and attach it to a plain edge with no teeth. To make this easier, I count the first seven teeth, and add a dot of glue on each one. Then press the opposing panel with no teeth on, 
while lining up both of the notches on the top. Having the top half of the panel glued together allows you to better mold the bottom instead of gluing everything all at once and having it move around. I'm doing the same method for all the remaining panels and when you are done it will look like a big pinwheel. Once you have your pinwheel, glue the bottom half together by folding back the shark teeth and adding the glue to all of them. It is important to curve the panels as you go and keep them pressed down to mold the shape, similar to before with the walls of the hexagon, also covering the creased edge. Last, I finish by looking on the reverse side and pressing to define that crease. My other tips and tricks are to try and keep the glue inside of the lines of where the teeth fold in so you are less likely to smudge it with your fingers. And if your paper starts to move, slide a little bit of one side to connect with the other to keep everything in line. You will notice in your kit that the back panel of the hat has a cutout. There is no specific spot that you need to glue it when making the pinwheel, but after the panels are finished, have it facing towards the back as your guide to glue down the button and team logo. I have the button on the center where all the panels meet and the cutout is for the back panel with the front panel for the team logo. Trace over the letters to outline with the glue and press onto the middle facing the front. The precise tip really comes in handy for this. As for the 5950 New Era emblem, these do not come with all the kits, so if you want to add it on your hat, just let Amanda know that you want to include that option. It might seem obvious when you were doing this, but make sure to check that you don't glue the team logos on backwards, I almost did that. The opposite side should face you when applying the glue. I hope you enjoyed this method of putting the hat treat box together. I've tried practicing a few different ways to share with you and this was by far the easiest for me. So it would be great to simplify the process for you as well. Also keep in mind, if you order a red socks kit like I'm showing here, specify the colors that you want to Amanda. There are many different versions, for example, some have a red bill, others are the classic dark navy, and another popular one in the treat making world is solid black. Just ask her for what you want to personalize based on what your customer wants or whatever you want. Here is my last tip. If you happen to get glue on the hat from pressing the emblem down, you can scrape it off while it's wet with that pin that came with the craft glue or a toothpick. These baseball cap treat boxes make an all-star presentation. Now all we need are the terrific treats to match. The first simple but classic treat are chocolate covered strawberries to go along with any team color as well as the adorable baseball design. For this, I selected smaller to medium sized berries because although big berries are pretty, they won't fit in the box with the other selection of treats. And my favorite chocolate melts for dipping berries are the Sweet Tooth Berry brands. They are a great way to achieve vibrant colors with the pre-colored base and can be bumped up with smaller amounts of candy coloring. Right before melting them, I'm inserting 3 millimeter thick wooden skewers into my berries that have been washed and dried. I have a super in-depth tutorial on your guide to melting candy melts for the perfectly smooth consistency to dip strawberries and other treats. I will link it in the top right corner. To achieve the different shades, I left the royal blue melts as they are for the Dodgers. The royal blue with a few black melts and a few drops of Chef Master Blue for the Yankees. Red melts with a few drops of Red Chef Master for the Cardinals and black melts with a few drops of Black Chef Master for the Red Sox. 
The Sweet Tooth Fairy works best at 95 degrees for dipping, so get ready to dip at that temperature. Pull the leaves of the strawberry back and dip into your cup or container until the berry is fully coated. After shaking off the excess, instead of wiping the back of the berry, I shake off as much as I can and stand upright to dry. This method is optional, but it preserves the strawberries and prevents anything from leaking in the treat box and it looks nicer too. As for the thinning agent, I use Easy Thins or Paramount Crystals to thin out the Sweet Tooth Fairy to that fluid consistency, which I show step by step in that other tutorial I mentioned. And guys, if you are enjoying so far, thank you for stopping by my channel. Make sure you join the party and subscribe to see more of my treat tutorials every time I upload and hit that bell to receive all notifications. If you are aiming for a shiny intense black color like this, the Chef Master Candy Color in Black is absolutely essential. If you leave the mouths the way they are, they appear more of a gray tone. The white I have here for the baseball berry is in the super white. I gave mine a double dip since the white can be a bit sheer. After the strawberry set, it is time to decorate. To pipe the baseball design with the red chocolate, you will need a piping bag. My absolute favorite are these textured decorating bags. They are extremely lightweight, so it is seamless and the heat of your hand keeps the chocolate warmer for longer. Also, I like to tie mine with these ties that came with the bags. They work great for maintaining your pressure. Cut a very small hole off your bag and slowly guide your hand as you squeeze to make a curved line on each side. Then pipe small V-shapes to create stitches on top of the curved lines. It is best to do this at a slower pace with a light pressure to keep your control on the bag. For those precise details, I do not add any thinning agents to the chocolate that is going to be used for piping, otherwise it can be too loose. I will be sure to link these piping bags as well as the luster dust and all the supplies I used in the description box below. To the red berries, I combined a darker red luster dust from my local cake shop with the CK Pink Salmon Luster Dust to brighten the red. I applied this to the berry with a soft fluffy brush. It adds a nice shine without being too sparkly for the stadium. Finish off the luster with a drizzle. You can't go wrong with luster and drizzles on your strawberries. The blue for the Dodgers is a royal blue shade and it pops amazingly with this Linea's Luster Dust in Pool Party. It's just as gorgeous as it sounds. And the Yankees colors are more of a navy blue. I forgot to show I used back Hell Luster Dust in navy blue which added a stunning finish as well. For the Red Sox berries, I brushed on this Roxy Rich Luster Dust in black. A classic Red Sox cap is a very dark navy, the darkest blue of all the teams here. So I picked black to give it more of a contrast that stands out against the other blue teams. The teams are all ready to throw some pitches on the field. All that's missing are the bats. These caramel pretzel bats are just as unique as they are delicious. I sliced my pretzel rods in half and for the wrap you need craft caramel squares. Unwrap three of the squares for each pretzel rod and soften them in the microwave for anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds depending on your microwave. If the caramel comes out of the microwave looking like a complete sticky mess that won't work at all for shaping, so you will need to heat it for less time. Instead, it should look like this. I find it helps to add cornstarch to your surface to prevent sticking. I'm kneading the caramel and working it into a log shape, then pressing down flat onto my surface to wrap the pretzel. I cover about two thirds of the pretzel and smooth out the seam. And when the caramel fully encloses the pretzel, I taper it by pinching and stretching as I glide across and finish by rounding the edge. For best results, I recommend the Us brand pretzel rods since they are thinner. I had ended up using the Batchman and they were on the thicker side. Although they still work, it requires a bit more shaping. So if you could find the Uts, definitely grab them for this. Team Uts wins for these treats. 
Since the caramel will still be soft and marks up easily, I allow them to sit overnight. Before setting them aside, the last thing I do is smooth out the caramel with a small amount of water. We just finished wrapping the barrel of the bats in caramel. After letting them dry overnight, go ahead and dip the other end in super white chocolate melts for the handle of the bat. When dipping, the caramel end should be handled with gloves to ensure that the surface stays smooth. And these white melts are pretty sheer, especially when thinned out. Don't hesitate to give the handle a second dip. Go right back in after shaking off the excess from the first coat. Weigh the bottom off the side of the container and place on a silicone mat or parchment paper to dry. And when they have set, you can drizzle red chocolate onto the white section to make the handle grips on the bat. These red striped handles should be limited edition. Last but not least, we need a knob to hold the bat right. Melt one square for 10 to 15 seconds and sprinkle some cornstarch onto your gloves. I roll the caramel into a ball and break off a piece to resemble a small knob. Flatten the ball to fit onto the end of the pretzel rod and attach with edible adhesive or corn syrup. I brushed a small amount of edible adhesive on and held in place to secure it to the end of the pretzel rod. With these caramel pretzel bats, you won't be striking out at the game. The last treat we are making are these baseball cap cake bites, so every box has their own custom uniform. The same colors of Sweet Tooth Fairy and Chef Master candy colors are being used to mold the caps that I showed earlier for the strawberries. I'm adding a spoonful of chocolate to my mold, I found it on Etsy, and I prefer to mold with my chocolate at a slightly thicker consistency. It is less sheer and easier to coat the mold with the brush that way. You only need to coat the bottom of each cavity for now. You don't need to add any chocolate to the bill of the hat yet. Make sure to bring the chocolate up along the edges for a thorough coat. Once your caps are coated, pop them in the fridge for 10 to 15 minutes. Before the fun part, which is the cake, you want to check for any sheer spots or holes in your mold. Wherever you see it needs to be covered, patch it up and reinforce with a dab of chocolate on your brush, whether it's the edges or the center. If any of the caps are in the clear with no sheer spots, there's no need to add any more chocolate. Since the cake is going in there, it is best to keep the layers flat as possible. Flip the mold over and give them a check. Chill the reinforced layer for another 10 minutes and fill with your cake. This recipe is my yellow cake pop dough that I made in my no fail cake pops video. It's so smooth and can be used for the cake bites or rolling smooth round cake pops. You'll definitely want to check that video out if your goal is to master cake pops. As you can see, the dough is firm and easy to work with without crumbs. I'm forming the dough into a patty shape and pressing to fit inside each cavity. If the dough is overflowing the mold, you will need to pinch some off your patty to fit it flat, similar to how you would mold a cakesicle. Finish your last layer by pouring a spoonful of chocolate over the cake and push it around with your spoon, similar to how you would flood a cookie, and take a small spoonful to cover the bill portion of the hat. It is important to work quickly and settle out the chocolate before it dries. Feel free to flatten it out with a small icing scraper if needed. This side is going to be underneath anyways, but keep in mind the quicker you work and settle this layer, the smoother it will be and the less scraping you will have to do. Chill your cake bites for a final round of 15 minutes and carefully remove them from the mold. They can pop out at any moment, so to do this, flip your mold onto a board and push them out a little at a time, the same way you would push an Oreo out of a plastic Oreo mold. 
Finally, all of our baseball treats are complete and we can package them in their very own classic hat box. While we do that, I will share some important instructions for your treats. The boxes appear small, but everything is going to fit. Line the box with your favorite color of shredded crinkle paper. You can match the cap or add a contrasting color that matches the logo and slightly stretch the box. They fit best with the cap in the back, the bat in the middle, and two strawberries angled in the front. I recommend to package your bats by wrapping them in clear cellophane bags before placing them in the box because the caramel will make marks in the bat from the crinkle paper or from touching the other treats. And also leave your strawberries in cupcake liners. Strawberries are best dipped fresh the day that you were selling these to a customer or giving them as a gift. So keep in mind to package them right before pickup or delivery. I hope you guys enjoyed making these brilliant baseball cap treat boxes with me and you learned something new. Although the treats will be gone in minutes, the box is a keepsake that lasts a lifetime and makes such a thoughtful gift for any baseball fan. My dad is a big baseball fan and inspired me to make these for you guys. It's Christina here, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.